Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you for a tutorial on how to animate and rig anything in Blender. Now this is actually a really simple process, and this was actually requested by one of my viewers, so big thanks to you for requesting this, I'm sure this will help a lot of people. So with this, I'm just going to go ahead and rig this really simple um, model of a Stormtrooper that I got off of TF3DM.com, which is an awesome place for a bunch of... Um, free 3D models for you to download and use whenever. So this tutorial will pretty much cover the basics of rigging anything. I'm just gonna be rigging a person for this in this case, but you can go ahead and rig pretty much anything you'd like. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm gonna switch out of material mode here, or render mode, I'm sorry, um, because I don't really need to uh, pay too much attention. And here we can see our mesh. It's really nothing too fancy, it's just a low poly mesh of a stormtrooper with some textures on it, and I set up some basic materials. I'm going to go ahead and turn on screencasting keys so that you guys can see what I'm pressing down here in the lower left. So let's go ahead and start out by basically rigging our mesh, because obviously you have to rig before you can animate. So I'm going to press 1 to go into front view, I'm going to press 5 to go into orthographic mu view, not in orthographic mu. Um, I'm going to press Shift A and add a single bone under the armature tab. Now when we add this single bone, this bone is basically like a joint or like a, I don't really know how to describe, but it's like an actual bone in your arm. And those balls at the end are joints, if you can imagine that. So over here in the armature settings, we're going to come over here and we're going to check X-Ray. And basically what X-Ray does is allowed us allows us to see the bone through our mesh. So you can see the bone is actually between the Stormtrooper's feet. However, if we reposition it, we can still see it even though it's behind there. Now if we uncheck X-Ray, you'll see we can't see it. But if we do check X-Ray, you can see it. And this basically just helps with positioning of the bones. In addition, we have a couple different options of how we want to display it. You can either cho choose an octahedron, a stick, a B-bone, an envelope or a wire. Now my favorite is a stick because it shows the stick which is the bone and the little ball at the end and it provides the most precision because it's such a small bone. So I'm going to switch back into front orthographic view here and I'm going to go ahead and position this right um, actually that's the perfect size for this model. The goal is to have this bone stretch from the hips, the top of the hips, all the way to where the shoulders would be. Now it might be a little bit tall so I'm going to drag it down just a tad bit and uh, by doing that, I switched into edit mode by pressing tab and just drag this top node down by selecting it by right clicking it. So now what we can do is we can select the entire bone by clicking the bar in the middle. We're going to press W and click subdivide. Now you'll notice we have two different bones. We have one bone up top here. Oops, I didn't mean to switch into orthographic mode or not orthographic rendered mode there. And then we also have one bone on the bottom. What we can do now is select both of these and press W again and click subdivide. And now we have four different bones and this will make up our spine. It's important to have a really flexible spine that way it doesn't come out looking weird because if you see somebody, imagine seeing a human bend in one spot on their back like a joint, it's going to be really unnatural, really funky, and it's not going to look natural at all. So the goal is to have, I mean, preferably you'll have like 50 bones but nobody's going to pay that much attention to it. So I find four bones to be a good um, medium, I guess. So I'm going to switch out of edit mode, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch into side orthographic view by pressing numpad 3. I'm going to reposition this so it's right up against his back, not right where his spine would be, more towards the middle, but kind of where his spine would be. And then next I'm going to switch back into edit mode, I'm going to select this top node, and I'm going to press E to extrude, and we're going to extrude it up his neck to place it right at the bottom of where his neck would connect to his skull, and then one more time straight up into head, his head, not straight up into head. Um, I'm going to reposition this just a little bit more, just like that. So now we have five, or I'm sorry, not five, six different bones. We have the head, the neck, the three spine, or the four spine, uh, spinal bones, and that's about it. Now if you'd like to, you can rename these bones so you can keep track of them by selecting them, clicking the bone in the properties menu and naming this. So this one would be head, this one would be neck. Now I'm not going to do this too much because it's not really important for me to keep track of the bones. If you have to keep track of the bones for using this for either motion capture or something else like that, it's really important to name them. That way you get the idea of what you're actually doing. So I'm going to switch back into front orthographic view and I'm going to select the bone or the joint right below where our neck is. So it's not going to be exactly um, like where the neck begins, but the one right below it. We're going to go ahead and extrude this to the left and to the right. So I'm going to press EX 
to extrude along the x-axis and EX again to extrude along the x-axis. We're going to try and keep this as symmetrical as possible. So I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to extrude them along the z-axis and we're going to position these where the elbows would be. Now I'm going to press SX to scale it out. We're going to just reposition it just a little bit. And now you can see this acts as an upper arm bone. Now the reason that I said this will work for any model, you're like, wait a second, I'm doing a cat, why, why would I do this for a cat? All you have to do is follow the general anatomy of a cat. So if you think of a cat, a cat obviously has a bone running in its upper arm, its lower arm, it has a wrist, it has a bunch of toe bones, it has a spine. You just have to place the bones where the bones would be anatomically correct. So if I were to place a bone coming out like this, a human doesn't have a bone that comes out like that, so it would be completely irrational. Now I don't really have to work, worry about supporting bones like um, like ribs and stuff because all of that, those bones are more protective bones, it's mostly bone, bone, bones that have joints connected to them that you have to worry about. So now you'll notice if we switch into side orthographic view, our, um, our arm bones, our upper arm bones are kind of far back because we want them to be, for the most part, centered. So I'm going to select both of them and I'm just going to push them forward just so they're nice and centered in the arm. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the shoulders because the shoulders are set a little bit far back and we want the shoulders to be as accurate as possible. So now I'm gonna go ahead and extrude down the, um, down to the hand, or down to the wrists as well. Just like that. And we'll leave the hands for now. Next thing we're gonna do, actually let me check to make sure, yeah, now you can see they're once again behind where they should be so we'll reposition them. And now the next thing we're going to do is the hips and the legs. So hips are really simple. All you have to do is extrude across the x-axis, extrude across the x-axis, select both of them, and then move them down a little bit. And this basically just acts as, I mean, hips, I guess, um, for our 3D model. It just allows a little bit more uh, work or a little bit more room than just going straight down like that. It allows us to tweak his uh, hip position a little bit more and it makes it a bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude these down to his kneecaps. And then switch into side view, make sure they're positioned correctly. You're also going to want to move the hips forward a little bit, just because they're more of a middle of the body kind of thing. We're just trying to get them there. We can also move the bottom spinal bones just to kind of squeeze them into the right spot here. There we go. All right, we'll switch back to front view and we'll extrude these down once again. Right. reposition them kind of where the shin bone would be then for feet um, if you want to go as far as animating or rigging all the toes and stuff that's totally up to you I never really do that because none of my animations really take that much work what I usually do is I connect this to the heel just like that and then I go ahead and connect it down the foot and then I do a little toe bone as well and that just basically allows us to tweak every single part of the foot now this actually came out pretty well. Um, a lot of the time feet will be angled in or out so you have to reposition these bones. It's pretty good for me though. So next thing we're gonna do is the hands. Now hands are a tricky thing because you could either rig the entire hand or you could just leave it how it is and just do one hand bone or one bone that controls all the fingers. In my case, I'm just gonna do one hand bone because it's extremely time consuming to go ahead and do all the hands and position them perfectly. If you do wanna do the hands though, what you can do is you can just uh, have one bone go to each finger just like this and we'll have two joints in every finger just like that. So I'll do this with the middle finger, we'll start down here, one 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 here. And you can see how that works. That actually came out pretty perfect. Um, typically it's not that perfect. Um, however, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna go ahead and give it one bone going straight down to the middle finger and this will just control our entire hand and I'll do the same on this side and we'll just make sure that it's in the right spot and then our rig is actually already finished now if you're doing some sort of animal you might have a tail I recommend doing the tail the same way we did the spine just extruding one long bone switching into edit mode and then pressing W and subdivide then positioning all the little um, nodes where they need to go in accordance to the tail. Um, other than that, you already have your rig done. It's really simple, it's really easy. Now all we have to do is parent the rig to our model itself. So if we select our mesh by right clicking it, hold shift and right click the rig as well, we can then press control P, which is parent, and we can select automatic weights. 
Now you can see I didn't get any error message up here. If you did get an error message up here, you might have to try a different mesh or you can do it the manual way. If you can look up a tutorial on white painting, that'll guide you through it. Um, fortunately, mine didn't have any errors. It usually doesn't have many errors. And now what we can do is select the rig itself here and we can go into pose mode. And you'll notice now we have just one bone selected and we can select one bone at a time and it's blue, which means we're in pose mode. And you'll notice if we rotate it, our bone moves. Just like that. Now you'll notice that his chest is kind of moving too, which we don't want. And I'll show you how to fix this in a little bit. If we can try and move everything on his body, we can see his head moves. He has some trouble moving those things, which is going to be a problem, so we'll fix those as well. His spine works pretty dang well. His legs work pretty dang well. His hips work pretty dang well. <laughs> and we can also see that his hand now can flap like a butterfly. <laughs> no finger movements, but it's good to test out everything just to see what you're working with. Um, but then we're going to go ahead and make some fixes just so our mesh comes out to the best ability or to the best result that it possibly can. Because when you're moving an arm, you don't want the chest coming out like that. So what I'm going to do is with both arms, I'm going to stick the arm out straight just like this. So it's in a perfect T-pose. I'm actually going to switch into front view to do this just so we can get the perfect T-pose right here. So now he's in a perfect T-pose and you'll notice his chest pretty much inflated to three times its size. So what we can do is we can, with the bone selected, we can hold shift and right click our mesh. And in the lower left, we can come down to weight paint. Now basically what weight paint does is it shows um, and allows you to edit how strong of an influence each bone has on the mesh. So you'll notice in the red spots, that's where it affects it most. And where it's in the lighter green, lighter blue spots, that's where it affects it the least. So you can see this one has most of it on the upper head and not much on the lower head, but you'll notice that these are completely blue because they're not being affected by it at all. So what we can do is I'm gonna go ahead and fix the chest right now. I'm gonna select one of the arm bones, the upper arm bones, and we have this uh, menu over here. If you don't have this menu, you just press T to pull it up. And under the brush settings, we're gonna select subtract, which will allow us to remove some of the weight painting, um, some of the weight off of the actual mesh itself. So um, all you have to do is click and you'll notice it starts getting a darker blue and the mesh stops deforming the way it does. So I'm gonna kinda isolate this to just the um, just the arm and you notice I'll change the strength over here just to make it a little bit more powerful in some places, a little less powerful in other places. And hopefully this will fix our mesh deformation problem that we're having. And you can already see that this side versus this side, this side has a lot more distortion than this side. Uh, there's still a little bit over here that I need to take care of. Sometimes meshes, especially complicated meshes like this one, get to be a little bit tricky um, because a lot of the little vertices don't like to um, cooperate. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about this. All you have to do is just try and work around it to the best of your ability. And you can see that I'm now painting it back on by changing this to um, draw instead of subtract. So I just wanna make sure these edges are nice and red as opposed to um, whatever color they were before. So now you can see it works pretty much flawlessly and you'll see it's kind of pulling some vertices up here. So you'll notice when I rotate this, it's pulling some vertices awkwardly. That's what we wanna try and get rid of. And you can go around your entire mesh and do this. I'm not gonna do the entire mesh in this case because it's a tutorial. I don't wanna waste all of your time fixing this. So now you can see, there we go, there's a little bit better an arm, or a little bit better of an arm. It's still kind of buggy because it's a low poly mesh and it's gonna happen if you're using a low poly mesh, no matter what you try and do. So that's kind of a problem, I guess, but you know, what can you do? That's really the best you can do. So um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the head here and you'll notice that we have these little things down here that aren't red at all because they aren't being affected. So what I'm actually gonna do is tilt the head all the way back so we can get a full image or a full view of these little things. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go to draw and I'm just gonna draw all over them. I'm gonna make sure the strength is set to one. And we're just gonna draw all over them. Try and get them completely into place. Uh, hopefully it'll work. There we go. I'm gonna actually color most of the head red as well because it's important that the head is all affected and not just partially affected. 
A lot of this is going to require some experimentation on your own because you have to learn what type of mesh works, what type of mesh won't work, um, what type of rig will cause errors, what type of rig will not cause errors. And um, so it's tricky. Oops, I had draw selected, not subtract. It's kind of tricky and it's one of those things that really ex requires some experience. But after you get that experience down, you'll come out with something that looks really, really good actually. Um, so now you can see this will affect this completely. And actually you'll notice that the neck bone is actually what's controlling these. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these blue. Um, try and paint the entire head blue so the neck doesn't affect the head and doesn't warp the head at all. Because we want the neck just to affect the neck. So there we go, that's a little bit better. I find placing things, um, or displacing things like really drastically like that, you'll see what the main errors are and what you can do to fix them. Sometimes it won't work, especially once again with these low poly meshes. This is a really bad mesh that I chose for this, but it's the best we can do. Now let's go ahead and get into animating. I'm gonna press, press AA to select everything and press Alt R to reset the rotations on everything. I'm gonna switch out of weight paint mode and just select the mesh. So now what we have is we have a bunch of these um, little bones that we can position and make our person do anything with. Pretty much, it's that simple. Now this is good for posing, but what happens when you want to animate it? All you have to do is get it into a pose you want. So if I want him to be um, maybe, I don't know, We'll just do a quick little pose here. We'll have him giving a bow. Uh oh, so there's another problem. Maybe you won't give him a bow. <laughs> um, so yeah, weight painting is gonna be a tough thing because of how, uh, how much editing you have to do. I tried to do as little as I could in this. In reality, I'd spend about most, or a lot of the time, more time than I spent making the rig. Uh, in doing this. So now that we have this all positioned, what we can do is we can press AA to select every bone. To set our default pose, press I and then press lock rot scale. This will lock the rotation, scale, and location of every bone. Now we can go down our timeline. You'll notice there's a keyframe right there. Let's go to 50, we'll say. And what we can do is we can now pose our person in a different pose. You can see it's once again glitching because of the weight painting errors. And now what we can do is we can press A, A, I, lock, rot, scale again. Now if we go back to the beginning and we play through, you can see that he moves his hands. Just like that. Now of course, animations will be a lot more complex than this. You're gonna have to make a walk cycle probably and a bunch of other things. Um, in addition, we can also tweak things like the spine, the legs. Um, and if you only wanna move one thing, so for example, if you only wanna move the head, and you want the arms to keep moving in the pattern, you don't have to go back and adjust the head and lock it here and then lock it there and select the whole thing and change it. All you have to do really is just reposition it once. We'll make them look up. And with the head bone selected, you press I and then lock rot scale. And that'll just save the data for the head bone. So now you see it goes back down because it had it selected there. And now what we can do here is we can slant his head down like this. And we can also move this arm up like this and we'll select all of these that we moved and save them here. And now you'll see that only those bones move and if we need to, we can now adjust things here and they won't follow the same path as that. So it's, it, it's just a bit better. It's more professional, I guess, to do that. That way you're not just getting a full body animation. It'll come out a lot better and add a lot more customizability. So, of course, this is just a very basic tutorial. I'm not the best animator myself. I'm okay at rigging, um, but, you know, it takes a lot of learning, and I'm still in that learning process. I mean, I'm only 16, so I have a lot to learn. Animating is a very hard thing to learn. I know from experience, the best animation I've ever done was pretty crappy. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big learning curve. So, best of luck in your endeavors with animating and rigging. But that's about all I have for this video, so thank you all for watching, be sure to hit like if you like this video and you found it helpful, and be sure to hit subscribe if you like to see more videos like this. I upload every Wednesday and Saturday, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Other than that, I'll see you guys later, adios.